friends we are starting now this is 157th friday group meeting uh, topic is a territorial jurisdiction jurisdiction of the high court to crash fir criminal case the speaker is uh, beloved senior advocate mr justice uh, nagamuthu and uh, present senior advocate tampos senior advocate of this court sir uh, is addressed our friday group on 81st friday group the topic is locating culpability home site that is on 11/5 2018 that is the first address of friday group 92nd friday group meeting principles of Juris judicial evidence part 1 that is on 14 september 2018 93rd friday group meeting that is principles of judicial evidence part 2 20 september 2018 98th friday group meeting that is fair investigation of human right that is on 16th 11 2018 sir and then 15th friday group meeting that is 2018 and 2019 developments in criminal jurisprudence that is on 10th of uh, 10/5/2019 and then 42 child marriages some un unsettled legal issues that is 14 february 2020 so this is a 157 sir you are addressing we are all grateful you are always uh, enlightening us as always sir and thank you very much now one second one second sir we are not going for any introductions at this time because to save our time ट on a sort of paucity of time because only 40 minutes is given i want to be a little brief on the topic on the topic given today pertains to the territorial jurisdiction of the high court under article 226 2 of the constitution of india as well as under section 482 of the code of criminal procedure more specifically we are going to discuss about the territorial jurisdiction of the high court under these two provisions in the matter of quashing an fir or quashing a criminal case pending elsewhere not within the territorial limits of the high court concern for example the question is very simple suppose the fir is pending in the state of tamil nadu can an application be filed under section 482 crpc before the honorable delhi high court for a repetition under article 226 of the constitution of india seeking to quash that fir pending in the state of tamil nadu or a criminal case of post cognition pending before some other court elsewhere like andhra pradesh or elsewhere this question very often disturbs us therefore i have chosen this topic let me before going into the subject very deeply tell you about the history of this territorial jurisdiction of the high court under 226 as well as 482 before the advent of the constitution of india there were three high courts started high courts which also enjoyed the power to issue writs previous council time and again held that your territorial jurisdiction to issue a writ is confined only to your territorial limits for example the bombay high court cannot issue a direction or a writ in respect of any authority in calcutta or any other place so this was confined only to the territorial limits 
of the High Court concerned. This was the original position before 1950. After the advent of the Constitution in 1950, the same position continued as per Article 226 one of the Constitution of India. There were, see for example, if suppose a repetition used to be filed, challenging some order passed by some authority in Delhi, like Election Commission of India. Whether it petition can be filed in any other high court in the country other than the Delhi High Court, then it was Punjab, Ariya, Punjab High Court. The Supreme Court held, after referring to the judgment of the Privy Council and also by strictly interpreting Article 226, one of the Constitution of India, the Supreme Court said in uh, Venkata Subarao's case, that is the Election Commission of India versus Venkata Subarao case, it is a constitution by judgment reported in AIR 1953 Supreme Court page 210. There the five judge bench made it very clear, no, you can't file a case here. That was the case actually what happened was, as against the proceedings of the election commission, a repetition was to be filed. A party had to come all the way to Punjab to file a repetition because Delhi was within the jurisdiction of the Punjab High Court. The question was whether the repetition can be filed elsewhere under Article 226. Five-judge bench of the Supreme Court categorically held, no, it is not possible. Because the jurisdiction of the High Court under Article 226, one of the Constitution of India, is limited to the territorial limits. If the authority against whom an order writ is to be issued is not located or residing within your territorial limits, you cannot entertain a repetition. This was the law declared by the Honorable Supreme Court in this Vengara Subarao's case. This was in uh, 1953, that is hardly within two, three years of the advent of the Constitution of India. Then they waited that the Supreme Court may take a different view later. There was no change. What happened in 1960-61? To decide this issue, a seven-judge bench was constituted again on a reference. That case is Kajur Singh versus Union of India, AIR 1961, Supreme Court, page 532. Seven judges, again by unanimous view, held that the view taken in Vengara Subarao's case is correct. And therefore, the High Court cannot exercise any jurisdiction against an authority who is not located within the territorial limits of that High Court. So, law was once for all settled by 7 judge bench. The matter was considered by the government. See the practical difficulties. Can you expect a person from extreme south of this country to come all the way to Delhi, now it is a Delhi High Court, to file a case? Suppose, let us say, there is uh, some dispute in respect of uh, admission. So again, National Medical Commission case is to be filed, it is to be filed. Can we expect a student from Kanyakumari to come all the way to Delhi to file a repetition? Mm -hmm. This difficulty was referred to Select Committee and so many committees of the court, um, of the parliament. Finally, the government came up with the 15th amendment to the Constitution of India by which sub-article 1A was introduced. For the first time by the, in the constitution, the jurisdiction of the Honorable High Court was expanded beyond the territorial limits of the High Court based on the cause of action, either in full or in part. It doesn't mean that in respect of a matter, matter relating to Delhi, you can file repetition elsewhere in Cal Cal Calcutta or somewhere. But you can do, provided there is a cause of action or part of cause of action falling within the territorial limits of your high court. So the cause of action is a concept known only to civil law. For the first time in the constitution, the concept of cause of action was introduced to Article 226 2. Then what is cause of action? This concept of cause of action introduced to Article 226.2 has only made lot of confusions later. I am going to refer to 
number of judgments on this aspect. Now, so far as civil law is concerned, we know very well this is a well recognized concept that cause of action means a bundle of facts which give rise to the enforcement of your right. Right? Very simple definition given by our courts. So when you file a writ petition, in respect of a civil matter or not a criminal, that is other than a criminal matter, there can be no difficulty in choosing the place where you have to file the writ petition based on the cause of action. The problem arises only in the respect of criminal cases. In criminal law, the concept of cause of action is unknown at all. There is no cause of action. Now, how to invoke Article 226.2 to file a writ petition elsewhere to quash or to quash a criminal case pending within the jurisdiction of some other high court? How to do that? The cause of action business. When I say that the concept of cause of action is foreign to criminal law, then Article 226 becomes unworkable so far the criminal cases are concerned. This problem was encountered by various courts. Now, in 1999, CBI versus Narayan Divakar, 1919, 4 SEC, 8656. This was a case where some offense was committed in Goa. Quite naturally, if you want to quash that FIR, you have to go only to the Bombay High Court. But subsequently, the accused were transferred to Arunachal Pradesh. CBI summoned him from Arunachal Pradesh. He immediately moved to the High Court of Gauhati because Gauhati High Court had jurisdiction over all the seven states. He moved the High Court on Article 226.2, seeking to quash that FIR which was registered in Maharashtra. His contention was that there is cause of action here because a part of the offence has been committed within the territorial limits of Gauhati High Court. Therefore, I have, this court has jurisdiction was the contention plea raised before the uh, court. But the Gauhati High Court rejected that plea. Gauhati High Court said that concept of cause of action is unknown to criminal law, therefore you cannot file it, you go there to the Bombay High Court. Matter came up before this honorable court in 1999 4 ACC, uh, page 656. The honorable High Court, Supreme Court did not utilize this opportunity to settle the issue. In this case, the court went into the facts of the matter and held that the entire occurrence had taken place in Mumbai. Simply because you have been transferred to Arunachal Pradesh, it doesn't mean that there is a cause of action here for you to file a repetition. Saying so, the Supreme Court, instead of going into the real issue as to whether the concept of cause of action in respect of a criminal case is really an acceptable concept. Simply decided the case on fact saying that no, 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 you have been simply transferred. Therefore, you cannot file the case here. You go to the Bombay High Court and file the case there. So this case did not settle the issue. Then came the much celebrated, but at the same time a controversial judgment of a two-judge bench judgment of this honorable court in Naveen Chandra Majithi. I would request all our friends to read the judgment thoroughly not the other judgments. Naveen Chandra Majithiya was the state of Maharashtra, 2000, volume 7, SCC, page 640. Again, this was a case where FIR was registered in Himachal Pradesh. Right? The accused moved an application for quashing the FIR before a Bombay High Court. This was done under 226 2. I have not so far touched upon 482, I will come to it later. Under 226 2, an application was filed seeking to quash the FIR which was pending in Himachal Pradesh. 
the Bombay High Court, after elaborate hearing, returned the writ petition saying that you won't present it there, we won't entertain this. Court said, no, no, it is of course true that there is some part of the offence has occurred here. It doesn't mean that we can enter in the writ petition. The court ultimately returned the petition. This petition was taken to this honourable court in Navin Chandra Majithia. There are two judgments concurring written by two judges. If you look at in this case, the concept of cause of action was elaborately dealt with. The court finally held that though there is no terminology like cause of action used anywhere in criminal law, still the term cause of action used to be equated to the place of occurrence. Right? The place of occurrence. Suppose the offence has occurred in two places. For example, cheating, some amount is received here, some amount is received elsewhere in another state. So the occurrence has taken place in two different states. So the place of occurrence is equated to the cause of action. <laughs> when there is a part of occurrence which has taken place in a particular state, then according to this judgment, there is a cause of action, part of cause of action for this court to entertain the writ petition under 2462. You may kindly look at paragraph 41 of the judgment. I will read what he said in the judgment in paragraph 38 first. Cause of action is a phenomenon well understood in legal parlance. Magapatra J has well delineated the import of the said expression by referring to the celebrated lexicographies. The collocation of the words cause of action wholly or in part seem to have been lifted from section 20 CPC which section also deals with the juridical aspect of the court. He further went on to say, that the Honorable Justice K.T. Thomas, judicial pronouncements have occurred almost a uniform interpretation to the set compendious expression. Even prior to the 15th Amendment to the Constitution, was to mean the bundle of facts which would be necessary for the plaintiff to prove if traversed in order to support his right to judgment of the court. In paragraph 41, the court observed, even in the context of Article 226, this is very important, even in the context of Article 226 2 of the Constitution, this court adopted the same interpretation to the expression cause of action wholly or in part arises. So the court almost equated the place of occurrence, that is the occurrence or commission of an offence as cause of action for a party to approach the different high court. This was the, this Naveen Chandra Majithiya by two judgments was later on followed in another judgment. No, before that there is a, yet another judgment that is, uh, uh, sorry, another judgment in 2009. Rajendra Ramachandra Kavalekar versus Maharashtra reported in 2009, 11 ACC 286. In this case also, after having referred to Naveen Chandra Majithiya, the two judge bench took the same view, equating the occurrence or the commission of offenders cause of action. In paragraph 22 of the judgment, I will read what the, the, this court has said. The territorial jurisdiction of a court with regard to with regard to criminal offence would be decided on the basis of the place of occurrence. Please kindly underline this. The territorial jurisdiction of a court with regard to criminal offence would be decided on the basis of the place of occurrence of the incident and not on the basis of where the complaint was filed and the mere fact that the FAR was registered in a particular state is not the sole criterion to decide that no cause of action is arisen. So the court distinguished. It may be true that the FAR is registered elsewhere or complaint is made somewhere else. 
that will not amount to cause of action. Then what is cause of action for the purpose of 226.2? It is the place of occurrence, it is the occurrence, it is the commission of offence. That is the cause of action. Therefore, based on these two judgments now, we can infer that suppose an occurrence in part has occurred in one state, whereas FIR has been registered in a different state, the party, the accused can approach this court, the first court, for quashing the FIR or even for quashing the criminal case. This is what we are able to understand from these two judgments. Now, curiously enough, the three judge bench in Dasarath Roop Singh, this judgment is very familiar to all of us. 2014 9 ACC 129. The three judge bench disapproved the view expressed by those two judgments of two judges. But still, the issue was not settled and those two judgments were not reversed. Therefore, Navin Chandra Majithiya and the Gavalekar case are still holding the field. Despite certain observations made by a three-judge bench, in this case, that is Dasarath Roop Singh. In Dasarath uh, Roop Singh Rathor, 2014 9 ACC 129, three-judge bench in paragraph 16, specifically it has heavily come down upon the bill expressed in other judgments. So far, criminal law is concerned, where is the cause of action concept? Please kindly see what it said. In paragraph 16, the court held that civil law concept of cause of action it is not strictly applicable to criminal cases. So this is three judgments. Referring to section 177 and 178 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, the court held that a criminal court is concerned only with the place of commission of a crime the court has uh, the reiterate that section 177 CRPC admits no debate that in criminal prosecution the concept of cause of action being a bundle of facts required to be proved in a suit and accordingly also being relevant for the place of suing is not pertinent or germane for determining territorial jurisdiction of criminal trials. Section 178 explicitly says then it goes like that. So in this case, three judgments says the concept of cause of action is foreign to criminal law. That is the well accepted principle. We are concerned only with the place of occurrence. Wherever there is occurrence, place of occurrence, there as per section 177 and 178 CRPC, trial can happen. That court has got territorial jurisdiction. Now this judgment relates to 138 of NIR. This has got nothing to do with 226.2. This is a case relating to the territorial jurisdiction of a magistrate under CRPC to entertain a private complaint. Therefore, having said in the judgment, the three judgments has not dealt with 226.2, but has dealt with only with reference to 177-178 CRPC. That is the territorial jurisdiction of a magistrate. When the territorial jurisdiction of a magistrate used to be decided, there is no question of any cause of action. There is only one question which is to be decided is as to where the occurrence has taken place. That gives you the territorial jurisdiction of the magistrate. So this is the three judgment, judgment of uh, the dishonorable court. Now, there came yet another judgment of again by two judgments on the very same issue. This judgment also refers to the earlier two judgments on Navin Chandra Majithi and all. Now it says like this in paragraph 19. In order to maintain a repetition, we can see, in order to maintain a repetition, the petitioner has to establish that the legal right claimed by him has been infringed by the respondents within the limits of that court's jurisdiction. Now, cause of action concept was equated to the place of occurrence by two judgments. I leave it to you for a debate as to whether this is right, whether this is a correct view or not. Now, 
if fir is registered in one particular place what is the cause of action for the party to move the court for quashing is it the is it the registration of the case or the commission of the offence if no case was registered the man need not come to the high court at all under 226 there what is the cause of action for him to come to the high court cause of action is not the place of occurrence where it was committed cause of action for him to rush to the high court to seek into quash is the registration of the case that gives rise to the cause of action when the fir is registered the man is aggrieved there arises a cause of action for him and therefore he has to go to the court within whose territory limits the fir has been registered i i am of the view that this may be the correct position of law so these two judgments that is navin chandra majithi and the other cases may not be the correct so far as the jurisdiction is concerned and article 226 i am saying 2262 if you look at this naval kishor judgment it very clearly says that the petitioner has to establish that legal right claimed by him has been infringed by the respondents within the limits of that court's jurisdiction by registration of the fir my freedom is cut tight my right is affected therefore the cause of action for me is to move only this court that court i just now told therefore friends now you tell me whether because a part of occurrence has taken place and the fir has been registered elsewhere whether the party accused can move this court or this place in delhi seeking to quash the fir registered in some other place let us say it is in chandigarh is it possible my humble view is that it may not be possible because cause of action for filing a case filing a writ petition is only the registration of the case this one aspect secondly if you look at 482 we will come to that then i will come back to 226 482 was not amended when 226 was amended and article sub article 2 was introduced 482 was not amended at all as per 482 whether an fir registered in some other case in some other state can be quashed by this court in delhi in excess of power under 482 crp the 482 crp is a jurisdiction that is inherent jurisdiction does not extend beyond the territory limits of that high court when the high court cannot exercise its inherent jurisdiction under 482 <coughs> can we say no 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 you can file under 2262 and get it quashed in a different place with due respect my humble view is that harmoniously we have to look into all these provisions if that is done <coughs> Navin Chandra Majithia and Navalekar require reconsideration. I will also. So this issue came up before the Kerala High Court again. Kerala High Court was highly confused after referring to the judgments. They referred the matter to a full bench. That case is reported in. I'll show you. Yes, Meenakshi Satish versus Satan Petrochemical Industries, 2007, DCC Online Kerala 248. In paragraph five of the judgment, Navin Chandra Majithia was referred to. That was again a case under 138. The facts of the case would be 138 case was entertained by a magistrate in Tamil Nadu. there is some part of cause of action part of cause of action some happened part of happened has occurred there 
in Kerala. Invoking 2262, red petition was filed in Kerala, seeking to quash. Navin Chandra Majithiya was referred to. The court got confused. Because whether the concept of cause of action can be brought into the criminal law. Yes. Highly confused. They referred the matter to a full bench. The full bench authoritatively held. No, you, this cannot be entertained here at all. You go to Tamil Nadu, file a petition in the Madras side. This court has got no jurisdiction. See, in paragraph 5, Naveen Chandra Majithiya was referred to. And in paragraph 7, Musarab Hussain has been referred to. I will tell you about that Musarab Hussain case also. Musarab Hussain is uh, 2006 3 SEC, page 658. That was again a case under the NIA pending in West Bengal, which was sought to be quashed under Article 226 in Kerala Eco, stating that there is a part of cause of action in Kerala. Naveen Chandra Majithiya was cited in Musra Hussain. The court distinguished between an offence and a cause of action for filing a repetition. This court held that once cognizance is taken by a competent court, jurisdiction cannot be invoked. See, this is on slightly on a different footing. Here, cognizance is taken by a judicial forum. That is your cause of action. When cognizance is taken by a judicial order, it can be challenged not under 226 to either under 482 or under the revision of jurisdiction. Not under 226 to. The, this court, when the matter came up before this honorable court, this court in paragraph 25 had to say this. It is no doubt true that in a criminal matter also, the High Court may exercise its extraordinary writ jurisdiction, but interference with an order of a magistrate taking cognizance under section 190 CRPC will stand somewhat on a different footing. As an order taking cognizance can be subject matter of a revision of jurisdiction as well as inherent jurisdiction of a High Court. Repetition petition of Article 226 against the subordinate court or judicial officer shall not lie. So if after the filing of the charge sheet, when cognizance is taken, as per this judgment, the only course available for the accused to challenge the charge, order taking cognizance is to go to the High Court within good jurisdiction, the magistrate has taken cognizance. Right? This is post cognizance. There can be no difficulty now in understanding the law in view of this Masar of Hussain. Right? But the problem is before cognizance is taken after filing of the charge sheet by the police or by a private complaint. In between, offence is committed, FAR is registered, investigation is going on. At that stage, if any relief is to be asked for, under 2.26.2, where this area alone is still confusing. Now, I was referring to about the full bench of Kerala. Naveen Chandra Majid was cited, this Musra Hussain was also cited. The court held ultimately the entire cause of action as far as the action of the learned magistrate is concerned, arose in Kwayamuthur in Tamil Nadu, outside the jurisdiction of Kerala High Court. Therefore, for the purpose of 2262, the Kerala High Court has no jurisdiction. Here again, it was a case under 138. Private complaint is filed, cognizance is taken. If once cognizance is taken, the accused is aggrieved by the order taking cognizance. That is the cause of action. That cause of action in this particular case has arisen in Tamil Nadu. Therefore, as per the judgment of this Musarab Hussain, you can't come to the Kerala High Court, you go to Tamil Madras High Court. That, that was the decision of the full bench. Here again, this judgment is no answer to the issue which we are now debating that is between the registration of the FIR and before the filing of charge sheet. That is not answered by the full bench of Kerala High Court also. So from these two judgments, that is the Honorable Supreme Court as well as Kerala full bench, one thing is very clear, 
that after the after cognizance is taken by a judicial order, either on a police report or on a private complaint, the remedy available for the party is to file a repetition of 2262 before the High Court within whose jurisdiction the magistrate has taken cognizance, not his one. That position is very clear. Regarding the previous position, as I said, there is some difficulty. Now let us see as to how the other High Courts have dealt with the issue. The Madras High Court has dealt with this issue in uh, Yelanahai, Bacha State, reported in 2015, SCC Online, Madras, page 51. In that case, FIR was registered in Mumbai. In respect of a part of offence which had occurred in Tamil Nadu, part of offence had occurred in Mumbai. FIR was registered there. Petition was filed under 482 CRPC seeking to quash the FIR in the Madras High Court. Now, if you apply Naveen Chandra Majithiya strictly, then you have to necessarily say, that Madras High Court has jurisdiction. Because Nabin Chandra Majithi and Kavalekar say that it is only the place of occurrence. That is a part of place of occurrence or the commission of crime is a cause of action. A part of cause of action is arising in Tamil Nadu. Therefore, the repetition should be allowed. But unfortunately for the party, they invoked the inherent jurisdiction of 482, not 2262. It became easier, therefore, for the High Court to say. No, 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 Nabin Chandra Majithi and Kavalekar, you cannot make a lane because you are not filed a repetition of 226. The High Court is not now willing to go into that issue at all. What is the petition that you have filed? You have filed it under 482. The jurisdiction of the High Court under 482 does not extend beyond the territorial limits of the High Court. Saying so, the High Court simply dismissed the petition. Though the High Court was not in a position to express any view in respect of the cause of action concept which was approved in two judgments of this honorable court. The High Court did not go into that, no opinion was expressed because the, the, those two judgments were from High Court. High Court made it very simple to dismiss because the petition of the 482. So far as 482 is concerned, as I have already pointed out to you, the petition, the, the jurisdiction of the Magistrate the High Court does not extend beyond the territorial limits of the High Court. No issue on that. The magistrate, yeah, the High Court in Delhi cannot issue a direction to a magistrate in Chennai or elsewhere in Calcutta. Because his jurisdiction of 42 does not extend there. He can issue direction only here. So saying so, that petition is dismissed. Now recently, similar issue arose before Telangana High Court. Then also the issue was whether a case which is pending after cognizance was taken in a court in Chennai could be quashed by Telangana High Court. The argument was, you please look at Navin Chandra Majithiya, <coughs> you please look at the judgment Kavalekar. So you have jurisdiction because in the charge sheet, admittedly it was recorded that a part of offence has occurred within Telangana state and the part of offence has occurred within the state of uh, Tamil Nadu. Therefore, this court has got to do this. This was the argument. But this Musraf Hussain and the Kerala full bench judgments were cited. The Telangana High Court relying on these two judgments categorically held. No, since in this case cognizance has already been taken, which is the cause of action for you to come to the court seeking to quash? You have to go only to that court, that is Madras High Court, within whose jurisdiction the magistrate has taken cognizance. So that was the view taken by the Telangana High Court also. Now, friends, these are the judgments available. Now, if this cause of action concept is freely allowed to have a role in criminal cases, now, what are the other possible consequences? You, know, you may kindly think of that also. Already FIR is registered here. You can go. And as per Chandra Majithiya, you can go to some other court. 
for washing the tape wire. Can you move that kai cord for bail under 439? Why? Why can't you move for bail? If this concept is accepted, because there is part of cause of action here, part of offence here, so you have jurisdiction. So the yeah, it is irrespective of the place where FIR is registered. That is what is said. I will read it again. Now you will um, see. Now the Kavalekar, the territorial jurisdiction of a court with regard to criminal offence could be decided on the basis of the place of occurrence of the incident and not on the basis where the complaint was filed and the affair was registered. So it may be true that the affair was registered here. You please grant my anticipated bill here. I can ask for so many other, see someone can, the complainant can go to some other high court seeking a direction under 2262, issue a direction to transfer the investigation to someone else. Can this not be done from some other high court? So there are a lot of confusion that will arise. Now, though these two judgments pertain only to the postment of FIR, a lot of other consequences will ensue. So for my humble view, because 45 minutes time given by Sashi Sir is going to go over, I want to finish. So there are so many things to say. So it's my humble another fight in yes, <coughs> my humble view is that concept of cause of in conclusion I want to say concept of cause of action has got no relevance to criminal law. Two ways it that we cannot change. Number one, number two, for the purpose of two twenty six two, in order to invoke the jurisdiction of a particular high court, we have to state that there is a cause of action. This cause of action does not relate to the crime committed. This cause of action relates to the cognizance taken or FAR registered or private complaint in the time. This is the cause of action for you to move the high court. Therefore, the place of occurrence can decide the territorial jurisdiction of the magistrate to take cognizance, that is all. That can't be equated to the cause of action that is referred to in Article 226.2. For the purpose of 226.2, I am guilty of repeating, please kindly consider this. For the purpose of 226.2, in a criminal case, the cause of action should be restricted to the particular proceeding which you want to challenge. If order taking cognizance is to be challenged, that is a cause of action. If registration of the FAR is you are aggrieved, then that is a cause of action. If private complaint is entertained by a magistrate by taking cognizance, that is a cause of action. So if you want to challenge that, you can do it only in that high court within whose jurisdiction the FAR is registered. Private complaint is entertained or charge sheet is Fine. not in this court. So this is my humble view and this Naveen Chandra Majithiya and Kavalekar where this honourable court has equated the place of occurrence or commission of crime to cause of action. In my humble opinion with great respect may require some more <laughs> discussion and uh, you are all great lawyers, it is for you to argue on this point and uh, tell the court. So the nutshell point is very simple. 177, 178 CRPC, they speak of the territorial jurisdiction of a court to try an offence. So when where occurrence has taken place, that magistrate will entertain the complaint or entertain the charge sheet and take cognizance. If there is part of offence which has occurred in a different state, then as per 177 or 178 CRPC, there are two places where the police can file final report. Though FIR has been registered in this state, he can file final report in the other state as well. The charge is for the policeman. He can file it. If charge sheet is filed in that court, FIR is registered here, charge sheet is filed in the other court, other state then that gives rise to a cause of action for you to move that high court. 
that may be the correct understanding of the concept of cause of action for the particular 2262. So far as 482 CRP is concerned, as I already told you, there is no doubt that the Duru of the High Court does not expand beyond the territorial mm -hmm. limits of the High Court. Then with this, I think that it is enough for me. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You have given your precious time and valuable inputs. Very crystal clear about territorial jurisdiction. We are all worried uh, since long uh, various places. Uh, two questions raised by one of yes, our sir. friends. Yes. It was covered, sir, in your uh, this thing, etc. Please read the question. Yeah, we have this one second. Two colleagues, uh, Atulja yes. and uh, Vijay Panjwani, raised. Anybody want question? Ah, please, please, quickly. Yeah, sir, I want to, sir, I want to one question. Yes. In what case you have... You can, you can ask somebody who is more competent than me. <laughs> 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 uh, permission, after permission, I... I, I <laughs> <laughs> please, sir. 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 You can very well ask for liberty, even if the liberty you can file it. It's, there is no rejudicator. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Rahul Lagarwal will be yes, Vijay Panjwan is sir. Yes, yes. Please read please the question. So the question is a US yeah, multinational just put it otherwise. Yeah. A US multinational company sell all its assets, goodwill, liabilities spread all, all over to India to central government. Thereafter, the government of India through bill in the parliament transfers all its acquisition to the new PSU. Certain acts and documents of E multinational have come to light with the mount to uh, international criminal offences. A grief petitioner wants to file a police complaint with request to register an FIR. Petitioner would wait for 90 days maximum before filing private proceedings before judicial magistrate. Question is, is Delhi magistrate court a proper court having jurisdiction? Yeah. 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 So, this has got nothing to do with 226, two cause of action business. No, no. Right? This relates with territorial jurisdiction of the magistrate. Absolutely. I have already explained that as per section 177 and 178 of Quora Criminal Procedure, it is the place of occurrence which decides the jurisdiction. In this case, he can very well file an app if there is a part of offence uh, which has taken place in his native place, he can very well go to that magistrate to file a complaint, private complaint, or he can go to that police also to the to uh, with a first information. No difficulty. This has got nothing to do with 226. It relates to the territorial jurisdiction of a magistrate to take cognizance which is dealt with under section 177 and 178. Yeah. Second. Second question, Atul Jha, sir. Yes, please. please. Whether the seat of President of India being in New Delhi confers automatic territorial jurisdiction to the High Court to hear death sentences even though nothing has taken place in Delhi? We suppose the Honorable President of India has rejected the mercy petition. Then that gives rise to a cause of action for the party to approve a Delhi Accord on 226 2. There is no doubt over that. No order, suppose the President of India has, passed any, has not passed any order, no action is taken. Then some mandamus is to be issued to some authority. Then that petition can also be filed here because failure to consider the uh, representation has occurred in, within the jurisdiction of Delhi High Court. So there can be, it can be, uh, it can be filed here in Delhi also. Yeah. Anybody wants any questions? Quickly, please. Time is very short. Want anybody? Quickly. Giri? Yeah, please. Yeah. Please. So suppose uh, the first FIR is registered in uh, Madras and a counter blast FIR is registered in Delhi. Yeah. Now, can a person move in Delhi under the 226 jurisdiction, right with 482, uh, praying for quashing of the FIR or an alternative to direct the officials to transfer the FIR to the Madras court? 
Yeah. 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 There are two things in that. We may seek into quash the FIR, which is pending in Madras, right? Counterblast to quash the counterblast FIR, which is pending in Delhi. No, are you? Do you want to move the Madras High Court or the Delhi High Court? Delhi High Court. Delhi High Court. Right. In respect of which case? The Delhi case. Delhi case. Oh, you are the accused in that case. You want to move the Delhi High Court to seek into quash the case which has been registered in Delhi? On the basis that already one FIR is pending in Madras. Maybe. Yes. So the entire cause of action is in Delhi only? Partly in Delhi and partly in Madras. That is occurrence. Now FIR has been registered in Delhi. You are aggrieved by the registration of this FIR. Very in Delhi, well. you can move the Delhi High Court seeking to quash this case. Yes. That is why I ask that question. Suppose you want to quash the FIR in Chennai, yes. in Tamil Nadu, <laughs> then you have to go to that court only. But sir, or an alternative, train for uh, clubbing the FIR, directing the like, High Court doesn't have the transfer uh, jurisdiction, Supreme Court has. But can the Delhi High Court uh, uh, direct the, uh, under mandamus jurisdiction, can the Delhi High Court say that you transfer this investigation? There are two ways which are possible. Number one, transferring a case from the, uh, an authority, <coughs> uh, having his uh, office with, within the jurisdiction of one within the limits of one state to another state to some other authority undoubtedly it can be done only by the not only it can be done by the supreme court no doubt over that right now the question is interesting question is why can't we move the delhi high court itself to transfer this case to the madras police right, right. right. now under 2262 the jurisdiction of the high court travels beyond the territory limits including Chennai. Right. right? The Delhi High Court's jurisdiction under 226 travels up to Chennai. No doubt over there. Right. Now there are two authorities involved in this. One authority is in Delhi, the other authority is in Chennai. Right, sir. Before the introduction of subarticle 2 of Article 226, the Delhi High Court cannot have any jurisdiction over the authority in Chennai. Right, sir. Now it has. Therefore, these two authorities can be made as parties in the writ petition which is filed in the Delhi High Court. Right. Delhi High Court can very well issue a direction transferring this case <laughs> to the Madras Authority, asking the Madras Authority to investigate both the cases. I am firmly of the view that it can be done. Okay. Rahul, uh, Rahul will give a vote of thanks, sir, finally. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Sir. On behalf of the Pradego Prayer, thanks sir, for such a informative lecture. So you have cleared so much doubt in the territorial jurisdiction, including the 482 and 226 difference. The 482 clearly held that like we can only go for the consent high court with having territorial jurisdiction and 226 to like there are judgments for you have yes enlightened us. Thank you very much. Sir, we'll take you an autograph, sir. Thank you. Anybody wants to join, just kindly underline your name so that mobile I can add next time. Huh?